Chrome Sensei here. Today in this video, we are going to do this loading animation effect. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by creating a new composite shot and I'm going to make it only five seconds long. And I might add that notice that it is 24 frames per second. And this is the final loading effect here and click OK. What I want to do is, is I want to start by making the number that counts first. So I'm going to create a new black plane and we're going to use that plane over and over again. And we're going to start by dragging it in here. And then I'm going to look for the time code effect. I'm going to use the time code to make that number count up. Okay. Now I'm going to twirl that open and I'm going to go from the format of SMTPE to frames. So it's going to count the number of frames. I want to scale that up to about 100 or so. Um, and so now when it plays, it starts counting up just like that. Okay. But when it gets to 100, I want it to actually stop. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually stop. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go to frame number 97 where it says 97. And I'm going to look for a speed effect. And I'm going to drop that speed effect on underneath the time code effect. And I'm going to keyframe speed at number 97. I'm going to advance forward one frame and then I'm going to make it zero. And I'm going to highlight both of those frames and make them constant. And so now what happens is it will go to 100 and stop there just like that. So that's what I want. Okay. Now I want to put this in the middle. So the way to do that is I'm going to create a new camera. Okay. And then I am just going to move that. Now I could actually move the time code itself. Maybe I'll just do it that way. See what I mean? So, and the only reason I created the camera was for those crosshairs, right? As soon as I'm done, then I can delete that. What I want to do though is, is I want that to be dead center. So I'm going to start it here. Okay. And then, and that is the, uh, uh, actually, I think I'll just use the transform. I'm going to keyframe the, position here. Okay. Making that there. Then I'm going to go to number 10 and I will center it again. Okay. Again, making that a constant keyframe. Then I'm going to go to 100. And when I get to 100, I'm going to center it again. And again, I'll make it a constant keyframe. So now what I have is a situation where it's, and then it centers itself, and then it centers itself again on the 100, okay? Now I want to right click on that and blend mode add, so that way it uh, shines on through. And the next thing I want to do is add the loading and complete. So I'm going to uh, basically make a text tool and then just drag a little box and type loading in here. And then, and I'm gonna call that loading, okay? I will duplicate that. And I'm gonna call this complete, all right? And on the duplicate, let me just move the duplicate so that I can see it. On the duplicate, I'm just going to retype the word complete. And I ran out of space there, so we'll make it a little bigger. All right, so now on the loading one, when it gets to exactly 100, right, I want it to end there. Okay, actually, I think I will go one more. And I'm going to put that right above it like this. Okay, then when it says complete, it will start at this moment, and we'll put that right there too. Okay. Just like that. So now what happens is, is it says loading until it reaches 100, and then bang, now it says complete, right? Okay, uh, I want the loading to actually sort of... Um, you know, go on and off flashing. So I'm going to open up the transform properties of that. We'll start here and I will keyframe the opacity. I'm going to go to half a second, which is 12 frames in and make it zero. Okay. I'm going to copy those two keyframes 
and then I'm going to go to one second, and I will paste, and then let me grab all four of those keyframes, copy, go to two seconds, and paste, and go to four seconds, and paste. So now my loading uh, will, Word will actually sort of go on and off until it says complete, okay? I like it. I think that maybe my loading and my complete, complete is just slightly below it, isn't it? I'm noticing. Let me just, that's pretty good. Okay. All right. I like it. Rescale the fit here. So now we can actually create our uh, loading animation. What I'm going to do is get rid of the camera. I don't need the crosshairs anymore. <clears throat> and just for the sake of uh, look, I'm going to drop the checkerboard background. All right, what I want to do now is, is I want to create that circle animation. So and we're going to bring our black plane in again. And, oh, this is this black plane is the counter. So we better label that. This black plane will be the outside circle. Okay. And the outside circle is going to need a color gradient. So I'm going to look for the color gradient effect. I'm going to drop it on that circle. I'm going to twirl these properties open and we're going to start color of a nice green and an end color of a nice red. And we're going to place our points exactly where I want them. The start point, I'm going to make negative 800 at zero. And then the end point I'm going to make at 800 and zero. So it's straight across. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come out just a little bit using my mouse wheel and I'm going to grab my mask tool and highlighting the outside circle I am just going to grab a section of this about like that okay and then when it reaches a hundred which is where it's at now I want it and that is yep I want it the mask tool itself to end there so I'm going to keyframe that and then I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning and I'm just going to drag the mask off the screen and right before it starts. So what happens now is it just loading, 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 and bang, it's loaded, right? Okay. Now you say, well, how do you get it to make the circle? It's very simple. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to search for the polar warp effect. And I'm going to take the polar warp effect and drop it onto... And there it is. Okay, now the thing is, is that the polar warp effect starts on the bottom and then circles around like that. So we don't want that. We want it to start on the top. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to twirl open the polar warp effect. And just, I can actually have it start anywhere I want. I'm just going to make it 180 degrees so it starts on the top and then circles around. And you know, that effect right there looks pretty cool. But we're going to add another one. So I'm going to right click on that and duplicate it. And I'm going to call that inside, uh, oops, inside circle. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to do a few things. Now I'm going to use a grid effect to make that those line shape thing. The problem is if you put a mask over a grid effect, it doesn't work. So we're going to have to make it into its own composite shot. But first, I want to remove the mask. Second, I want to remove the polar warp. Okay. Then I'm going to right click and say make into a composite shot and I want to move the gradient effect with the layer. So there it is. Now when I come back to the loading effect, there it is. And I am going to add the mask effect back in. So I'm going to right click on that and say copy. I'm just going to steal it and then paste it here. So there it is. And then I'm also going to add the polar warp effect back onto it again. But this time I am not going to uh, change it because I want it to be opposite of the other thing. Here's the problem though, is that right now it's sitting underneath that one. So I'm just going to slide the radius in a bit. Okay so that it's like that. So now we have two circles and they're sort of going opposite of each other, right? And that actually is a pretty cool effect, but I want that to have that lines, which is why we set this whole thing up this way. So I'm gonna go back to that composite shot and I'm gonna search for my grid effect. 
and I'm going to drop it onto the circle. And I'm going to make it black, okay? And I'm going to actually put it above the color gradient so that the color gradient affects the grid, right? Now all I have to do is open the uh, point one under the grid, and I'm going to start doing some tweaking. I'm going to start by expanding this out so that it's sort of out of the way. And I'm going to squeeze this in like that until I'm happy with that, basically. Okay. And I do want this just to kind of be higher. And let me adjust that so that that line is sort of out of the way. So now when I come back to the loading effect, you can see that it has those lines instead. So now it looks sort of like this, right? Yeah, that looks pretty cool. All right, now all I want to do is add the box, right? So, and that's the last thing I have to do. So I'm going to grab a black plane and drag it in. I'm going to recall it or rename it um, outside border, okay? And I want to search for the fill color effect and drop it on that outside border. And then if I twirl it open, I can make it any color I want and I want it to be green. There it is. All right, now all I have to do is draw a mask on it. And I'm actually going to try to basically draw that mask exactly around the very edge of it there like that. Okay. And then, and I think maybe I want to just adjust it ever so slightly. Okay. And then I'm going to invert it. So basically it's gone now. Uh, but if I twirl open the properties a little bit and say transform and or not transform but shape and I just lower the expansion then I can draw myself a little border like that okay now all I need to do is just grab the edge of that and bring it in to however I want it to sort of look okay like that maybe and then if I duplicate that and I call that inside border uh, I can grab that and just add myself another border like that okay and there it is that's the entire loading effect in hit film from scratch so if you have any questions leave them in the comments below otherwise thanks for watching if you would like to keep up with the latest tutorial videos from hit film sensei Consider liking the HitFilm Sensei Facebook page, following the HitFilm Sensei Twitter feed, and subscribing to the HitFilm Sensei YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. A new video comes out every Friday, and thanks for your support.